Right now, investigators from the International Criminal Court in The Hague are building the case that Russian soldiers have committed war crimes in their invasion of Ukraine. In all likelihood, this will be one of the most significant war crimes prosecutions since the end of World War II. This man cannot remain power. There's even a possibility that the Russian government or Russian military officials could be charged with committing acts of genocide. But in a drab yellow conference room in Moscow, one man is building the case that it's Ukraine that's responsible for atrocities in this war. He's selling the narrative that Ukraine is run by neo-Nazis who want to ethnically cleanse Russians from their territory. And he has a secret weapon a team of Westerners from Canada, the United States, and Europe, all of whom have a history of peddling pro-Russian disinformation. They are core parts of what he calls the International Public Tribunal on Ukraine. This tribunal could tell us a lot about how Moscow intends on responding to this real war crimes prosecution. So who are these frontline soldiers in Putin's propaganda war against Ukraine? <laughs> Do not believe what the mainstream media is telling you, it's a pack of shit. Earlier this year, I began communicating with a guy named John Mark Dugan. He's a former Florida cop, but in 2016, the FBI raided his condo, alleging he ran this sophisticated and long-running harassment campaign against his former colleagues. Rather than face charges, Dugan fled the country and has been living in Moscow ever since. And since that time, he's become a pro-Putin influencer online. I support President Putin for putting Russian interests first for his people. I've been trying to convince Dugan for the past number of days to do an interview with me. He's pretty touchy. He thinks I'm fake news. But he's just agreed to chat from his home in Moscow. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Are you able to pop your video on? Oh, it's not on? Oh, no. Sorry. That's okay. There we go. So uh, you were just uh, you were just in Ukraine for what a week? We hitched a ride with some military guys that were going in, and we just went and we explored the city. And what did you find there? Well, I mean, look, <laughs> um, I would say that probably 50, 60 percent of the people where I was were happy that Russia was coming in. When we spoke in March, he told me he was planning to head to the front lines to train up pro-Russian fighters on how to use anti-tank missiles. Donetsk uh, uh, People's Republic have captured a bunch of the Javelin missiles sent to them by the American government. When I was in the United States Marine Corps, I happened to be a uh, uh, anti-tank assault man. And um, my goal is to teach them how to use these missiles to defend themselves. Since then, Dugan has been sending me photos like this one of himself inside the cockpit of a fighter jet as it flies over the bombed out city of Mariupol. In late April, Dugan popped up somewhere unexpected as a key witness for the state-sanctioned International Public Tribunal for Ukraine. Hello, I'm John Mark Dugan. Since the beginning of this invasion, there has been overwhelming evidence that Russian forces have bombed civilian buildings, used rape as a weapon of war, executed civilians in the street, and even attacked chemical and nuclear facilities. But this tribunal is an attempt to flip that narrative. The guy responsible for the tribunal is a man named Maxim Grigoriev. For the past few months, he's been traveling through the occupied parts of Ukraine, collecting evidence of the government's supposed war crimes. We are standing before the base of the Azov base in Urzov. But the most interesting thing is that here is the Canada flag. What does he do here? Казалось бы странно, но на самом деле мы знаем, что именно в Канаде окопалось большинство потомков фашистов и нынешних фашистов из Украины. Key to Grigoryev's plan was to bring in Westerners like Dugin, who showed up to parrot the Russian talking point that Ukraine was using their own civilians as human shields. Ходят люди, которые очень четко говорили мне о том, что в СУ брали людей в заложники, использовали как живой щит. This claim is a clear tactic to distract from Russia's very real targeting of civilian infrastructure. Hi, um, Dugan was joined to the tribunal by Canadian Eva Bartlett. Are 
просто подвергается промывке мозгов со стороны СМИ. И они просто готовы поддерживать Украину. She's a long-time left-wing activist and commentator. Where she really made a name for herself was during the Syrian civil war. I think there's grounds to be very concerned that the, the white helmets, which are known to be not the neutral volunteers they, they brand themselves as, and the terrorists that they cohabitate with will stage another false flag um, chemical attack. At this point, the Russian media is pushing the conspiracy theory that it was the opposition that committed these chemical weapons attacks, not Bashar al-Assad's military. And Bartlett becomes a really useful voice for that idea. Since then, Bartlett has moved to Russia, where she makes and uploads videos to her YouTube subscribers and tweets out to her 100,000 followers on Twitter. More recently, Bartlett's been in Mariupol, where she's been producing videos like this one. It must, uh, our uh, land, Russian, it must be cleaned from uh, crazy people. Who are the crazy people? Some people call them Nazists. I'm about to chat with a guy named Tim Squirrel. He's the head of editorial and communications for a think tank called the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. They've been keeping tabs on these pro-Putin Western influencers, including Eva Bartlett, and they found that these influencers have grown their reach massively throughout this war. So tell me about these Western influencers. You know, are they are they making any money off this? What's their motivation? They include people like Eva Bartlett, who was responsible for peddling disinformation around the white helmets in Syria. So you've got people with a fairly long pedigree of being um, on the side of Russia in international conflicts. So someone like Eva Bartlett, you know, she's not monetizing you know, her videos or her social media per se. But are there other ways in which Russia can sort of give her a, a leg up? We know that several of these influencers have been able to reside in Moscow um, for a number of years now, which is unlikely to come without some form of benefit attached to it. Um, in addition to which, we know um, that some of them at least have been contributors to Russian state media, um, and it's unlikely that those relationships have been completely severed. So while we can't comment on the individual influencers at play, what we can say is the money has to be coming from somewhere. They are unlikely to doing this out of the goodness of their heart, regardless of whether they are trying to portray themselves as brave, truth-seeking journalists. We requested an interview with Bartlett to discuss her role with the tribunal, but instead of replying, she went straight to Russian state TV. What I'd like to say about that is I don't believe for a moment CBC would ever give me a fair hearing on their platform. They are Canadian state-funded media. They do the bidding of the Canadian government and the corporate interests. So what's the end goal here? I mean, Russia has collected all of this evidence. I mean, they've had these interviews. They've held this tribunal. They've recruited these influencers. What's the point of all of this? It is pretty crucial to understand that the Russian domestic audience does really matter here. Uh, that. One of the reasons that you'll bring in foreign influencers to testify in front of what is effectively a sham tribunal is to try to show the Russian people, the domestic audience, that other people are also on their side, which shows that actually Russia is winning, that Ukraine is losing, um, that effectively the war must go on because victory will come as a result of it. Simultaneously, you have to present Russia as the victim. So the reason that you are doing this tribunal is to show that there are war crimes being committed by Ukraine, and that effectively that means that you need to support the war as a domestic Russian citizen because they are in the wrong, you are in the right. Justin, can you give us a sense of just how much reach these influencers have online? Yeah, it's pretty significant. I mean, thanks to some research from the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, we know that they actually boast around a million subscribers across their various YouTube channels, all of these different Western influencers who are involved in the tribunal. We're talking about views north of 100 million. So their reach is, is pretty massive and it's pretty global, both North America, throughout Russia uh, and around the world. And you mentioned these are significant war crime prosecutions. Where do things stand now? Right, so we know the International Criminal Court is collecting evidence and they're gearing up for what will be an incredibly significant prosecution. We're talking about uh, all manner of Russian soldiers, potentially generals, even politicians who could be uh, tried for, for war crimes if they're able to be brought before the court. We think Russia will probably boycott that process, instead opting for things like this tribunal. But we could also see local prosecutions. Ukraine has already tried and convicted 
arrested one Russian soldier for war crimes. He pled guilty to executing a civilian. On the flip side, there are three foreign fighters, including two Brits, who have been tried and sentenced to death in uh, the Russian-occupied parts of eastern Ukraine. So we're already seeing some of this process uh, unfold in the area, and there's going to be a lot more to come. Thanks, Justin. Thanks.